Okay, I want to close off our discussion of scientific realism by actually by focusing on a counter-argument to, to, to realism uh, from the uh, anti-realist philosopher Boss von Frossen. Von Frossen wants to, to, to spell out a, a third kind of anti-realism. Uh, so far, I've generally looked at two broad kinds of anti-realism. You have things like the, the, the strict empiricism of people like the logical positivists, or you know, even the original empiricists, British empiricists like John Locke and David Hume. Uh, and then you have sort of the social constructivism of people like uh, uh, Thomas Kuhn or the strong programmers in the sociology of science and so forth. And I think broadly speaking, most of the views that we've looked at can fit into uh, one of these two categories. Um, but von Frossen gives us a third option, which he calls constructive empiricism. Uh, with constructive empiricism, Boss von Frossen is, is attempting to sort of uh, salvage what's still worth, worth salvaging from the logical positivist program while avo trying to avoid some of the problems. In short, he rejects the semantic ideas of the logical positivist. He actually thinks it's, it's, it's perfectly meaningful to talk about unobservable entities. You don't need to say that radio waves uh, are, are, are just sort of stand-ins for, for other sort of observable phenomena. But he is going to try to hold on to the epistemic ideas of the logical positivists. That is to say, basically, he's going to try to reject epistemic immodesty. He's going to say uh, that uh, 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 the, the, the positivists went wrong uh, in, in claiming that we, we can't get to the... Uh, uh, excuse me, the positivists did not go wrong in claiming that we can't get to the depths of nature. We should limit ourselves just to what we see. Now, um, probably a way of sort of cashing out what constructive empiricism is trying to say at its heart is to, is to make a difference between the things that our theories are committed to and what we ourselves are committed to. It's true, von Frossen says, that oftentimes our theories need to commit themselves to unobservable entities like quarks or quasars or whatever. Uh, sorry, quasars actually might actually be observable, excuse me. Quarks or, or, or neutrinos. Um, uh, uh, the theory might, might need to commit itself to that, but that doesn't mean that we need to commit ourselves to that. Uh, the theory can exist sort of independent of us. We can accept the theory without having to accept everything that the theory is personally committed to in this way. So by, by, by doing this, von Frossen is trying to hold on to what made empiricism attractive in the first place. And that's the I think sort of this fundamental intuition uh, that all of our knowledge about the world has to come into our brains through our senses. So um, uh, uh, it, it, it might be the case that our scientific theories actually describe the fundamental nature of reality. Darwinian evolution might be a fundamental fact of the universe in some way, or at least the biological world in some way. But determining whether or not it is true is not the business of science, according to von Frost. And the business of science is simply to empower us to make relevant predictions about the future. Um, in this respect, von Frossen's view is a sort of a kind of pragmatism. Scientific theories should help us make good predictions about the world. It should tell us what we should expect tomorrow. If we do X, Y, and Z, then we'll see A, B, and C. As long as our scientific theories can do that, what difference does it make if they're true or not? That's the business of, of metaphysics. And, that, and again, the positivists really didn't like metaphysics. They wanted to reject it, and von Frossen is, is sort of going to go uh, uh, along with them in that direction. Just so long as a scientific theory works, just so long as it gives us good predictions, then we don't have to say that it's true. That is going well beyond the evidence. This is a key sort of phrase that von Frossen repeats. He says, you know, the heart of empiricism is that you cannot go beyond the evidence. All knowledge comes from evidence, and all evidence is observational. So that means that we can never know anything beyond what it is that we actually observe. All knowledge, in the proper sense, according to von Frossen, needs to be limited to the things that we can observe. Now, uh, like I said, there's, there's some debate here over how we understand the role of instrumentation in uh, making sense of our observations. So telescopes or microscopes, for example. Uh, this, the, the standard realist take on an instrument like that is that they're extensions of observation. When you look through an electron uh, uh, a microscope, you're actually looking at things in the sort of atomic or even subatomic realm, as it were. Um, Von Frossen, though, again, is uh, going to take a much more sort of uh, logical, positive sort of position on this. He thinks that these kinds of instruments are, are too mediated by theory. When we look through an electron microscope, we might see certain sort of, uh, uh, we're going to see data, but it's, it's improper to say that what we're seeing is a, uh, a subatomic particle or, or, or an atom or something like that. That is uh, something that's an inference based on a lot of theory. Um, it's, not a, it's not an observation. Again, it's, it's something that's mediated by theory language. Uh, and again, but we, but we don't need it to be an observation in order to do everything that we want uh, in science. 
Now, von Frossen's uh, uh, sort of said what von Frossen says is that the goal of science should do is to aim for what he calls empirical adequacy. Uh, the key question for any theory, anytime you're testing or working with a theory, should be this. Does this theory accord with what we observe? Now again, it doesn't have to perfectly accord with what we preserve. Again, we want to remember the point about uh, anomalies not being counterexamples that we saw back in the, in the Kuhn lecture. Every theory is going to conflict with uh, experiment from time to time. Uh, so we don't need to be rigid falsificationists about this in some sort of Popperian sense. Uh, but w we should be able to sort of make an estimation in some broad sense as to whether or not the theory in question accords with what we observe. If it does accord with what we observe, we say that it is empirically adequate. And to the extent to which it does not accord with what we observe, it's empirically inadequate and we throw it out. So for von Frossen, accepting a theory just means one, using it sort of provisionally, believing that it is by and large empirically adequate, by and large it's consistent with our best available data, and then two, we use it to sort of just do kind of further puzzle solving, like we saw when we talked about Thomas Kuhn. So again, he's sort of borrowing this notion of puzzle solving from Kuhn and, and sort of trying to sort of reincorporate it back into uh, a broadly empiricist sort of tradition. Now, if, according to von Frossen, these two points gives us everything that we could ever want out of science. It allows us to, to perform experiments, to develop technologies, to make predictions about the future of the world. Um, all, we don't need to sort of get to the question of whether or not it's giving us something that's sort of fundamentally and uh, uh, in d a deep metaphysical sense true. We don't, it's, it's asking too much of science to tell us that it's getting to the fundamental nature of reality. Science does not get us to the fundamental nature of reality. Nothing can get us to the fundamental nature of reality. That's beyond our capacity as human beings. We don't need that. Uh, there's, there, there's no benefit uh, uh, von Frossen says, of insisting that we stretch science's grasp further than that. Now, Godfrey Smith pushes back against von Frossen on this point. Again, Godfrey Smith is a, is, is, is a variety of realist, uh, so he, naturally he's not going to take this kind of anti-realism from, from von Frossen lying down. Um, and the way he does that is sort of, he wants to say, yeah, look, empirical adequacy is certainly an aim of science. Obviously, we want our theories to be empirically adequate, uh, but he rejects the idea that it is the aim of science. He actually does want to say that, no, one of the aims of science actually is to get the world right in some sort of uh, 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 solid, consistent, at least, and at least semi-reliable way. Now, uh, I want to be cl clarify something, which is sometimes an, a mistake here. Von Frossen has no problem at all about certain kinds of scientific inferences. Uh, uh, it's fine to make, an uh, to make an inference from an unobserved tumor, from observed tumor-related data. You know, uh, if you get a, a blood test, for example, and the blood test says that, that, that you have a tumor or something like that, uh, you don't have to actually observe the, the tumor directly for, uh, for Von Frossen to say that, yes, it is a fact of the, about reality that you have a tumor. Uh, Indirect observation is something that he's absolutely fine with. Uh, so he, he's a realist in that sense. But in that sense, most anti-realists are realists. Uh, where, the, where his anti-realism comes in is when we're not just talking about unobserved data, but rather unobservable data. It, it, it's perfectly legitimate to go from observed to unobserved in science. You can be realists on that scale. Uh, but where you can't be a realist, according to von Frossen, is if, when you're trying to go from the observed data to unobservable data, to things which are fundamentally beyond the capacity of human beings to see. To say that a theory is empirically adequate goes way beyond the actual evidence that we currently have, but it doesn't go beyond all possible evidence that we could have. If we have the, the, the blood test that indicates a tumor, if we really wanted to, we could perform surgery, go in, and actually observe the tumor directly. Uh, usually you don't need to do something like that, but in principle you could. Uh, the, the, the tumor is in principle observable, uh, but a uh, you know, subatomic particles, though, are in principle impossible to observe. And the realist wants to go beyond what is all, what, not just the all current evidence, but all possible evidence in that regard. And it's that respect in which von Frossen says is, is a mistake. Uh, uh, science is, is, is overreaching at that point when it's trying to, to say that we're getting to a point where we can know things, not just about what we haven't observed, uh, but what, what is, technically speaking, unobservable. And so for that reason, uh, von Frossen rejects scientific realism.